welcome to Magathea Builder Worlds. This is going to be a Necromander Ash Waste build. Yes, it is. Um, Ash Waste, of course, has been out for quite a while now. Well, quite a while now, a few months. Um, and I'm sure that there have been an absolute plethora of videos of uh, unboxings and talkings about the, how the game works and, and the cool figures and, and everything else. Um, and I'm sure out there somewhere there must be some terrain videos as well. I haven't really made any ash waste stuff yet. I did make one ash waste piece of scenery, of course, which is for uh, my last Patreon build. Uh, there's another Patreon build coming up very soon. Um, but uh, I thought I'd have a crack at making some ash waste terrain. It would go quite well with my some sea stuff, because the some sea stuff could easily be underneath high primus, but or it could also equally be out in the kind of like the waste and the nastiness. So from that point of view, I'm hoping it's all going to kind of go together. Um, although this isn't going to be done in nice neat squares. Um, so uh, what are we going to be uh, working on? Well, I'm, I'm kind of in love with the Ash Waste to a certain degree. I'm an old school Necromunda player, a 1995 Necromunda player, and I remember the Outlanders box set coming out. Um, I was very excited about that with Scavies and, and, and the uh, rat skin rules and various other bits and pieces. And that was kind of cool, and I also, of course, was around uh, at the start when Necromunda came, not Necromunda, I was also around when, um, what's that fucking game called? Um, Gorka Morka, that's the one. I was also around when Gorka Morka came out in the late 90s as well. Orcs in trucks and war wagons, like Mad Max with orcs. Who wouldn't love a game like Gorka Morka? So the fact that they've kind of like combined, I reckon, the Gorka Morka and Necromunda and put it all together, yeah, it wins for me. Um, and they, of course, had bought out some absolutely brilliant models. I'm in the process of sticking together a whole bunch of these fellas. These uh, Halamites, uh, they're going to be ridden by Ash, Ash Waste Nomads. Um, although, it does seem a bit weird to be able to take Ash Waste Nomads on Halamites, but not be able to put your, your gang leader on one. Um, you know, because like, why wouldn't you have a whole warband mounted on them? Um, so, I've got a house for all that, of course I am. Um, and then, of course, I was also just blown away by how cool this model is. The eight wheel, the Ridge Hauler eight, oh hello, that bit's not stuck on. Ha! <laughs> um, the Ridge Hauler eight model, uh, absolutely fantastic. I was so in love with this model when it came out. Uh, it looked really, really cool. Uh, thanks to my patrons. I bought two. I bought one straight away to stick together as the model as it is. And I thought the other one I'd sit around with and see what kind of like happened with it. So actually, this piece of scenery is going to involve a Ridge Hauler 8. It's a really, really cool model. For those of you who haven't witnessed this model yet, it is ridiculously detailed. I mean, just looking at the underside of it, you assemble the suspension on each side for the different wheels. I mean, blimey, it, I mean, the suspension doesn't actually work, but it's not far away from it. It's a really, really cool model. Um, and I, I wasn't sure what to do. I've already seen a lot of great looking Ash Haulers out there. Um, or Ridge Haulers, whatever. Um, but uh, so I'd have a think but it didn't take me very long to get an idea because actually in the rule book right here in the very front page you've got this brilliant brilliant very evocative black and white piece of artwork well clearly with a ridge hauler right there that's been crashed and wrecked and is now being used as some kind of accommodation for, by the look of it, Ash Waste Nomads, because there's Helamite in that picture as well. So I'm kind of taking my inspiration from that, I think. I'm also, because I, like I said, old school, I came across these the other day. These, I'm pretty sure, are from Gorka Morka rather than Necromunda. I think these are the, the, the tents of the... Uh, Muty riders from from Gorka Morka, but they look really really cool. They're a great shape um, And obviously they need a bit of sexing up to go on a piece of scenery as well So from that point of view, I'm going to take a couple of these try and put it in with um, A Ridge Hauler 8 which I'm gonna have to wreck Yes uh, To kind of like tip it over on one side and have it all kind of like roughed up and, and that kind of thing um, and uh, that means that this model is going to be a um, piece of terrain. It's going to be more of a kit trash rather than a kit bash because I've got most of the kit. I'm using most of that there. So we're going to see how all this pans out. Uh, right, main constituent parts of this model then is going to be another Ridge Hauler 8 kit. Thank you, my patrons. Uh, 
this model is coming because of you. The whole point of my patron uh, uh, program, uh, Patreon program, um, is that uh, patrons contribute to help me run this channel, and then I get to uh, buy kits like this. I can't remember how much it is. Somebody will tell me. It's about 50 quid though. Um, I get to buy a kit like this, a 50 quid kit, and trash it for the sake of making terrain, which is really, really cool. So if you're one of my patrons, thank you very much. If you'd like to contribute to my Patreon plan, uh, then uh, check me out at um, patreon.com slash worlds. You too could be one of my patrons, uh, which means that for the price of a cup of coffee every month, you could be in the chance of getting a Magathea Build a Worlds piece of scenery made for you. Which is great. So I'm going to be using this, and I'm also going to be using 50 millimeter thick, uh, high density styrene. Right, where is it? Over there. Let me grab it. Wait a minute. Right, so, uh, I'll get out of the bloody box. Right, okay, I often get asked by people where do I get some of my modeling materials from? Really can't get it out of the box. Um, look, this is two big bits of 50mm uh, XPS foam, um, which I bought. And to answer that question, where's it come from? Hang on. No, it's coming out of the box now. I've had this in the garage for some time. I bought it for a project. I can't remember what the bloody hell the project was for. But uh, now it's in the garage, in a box, and it's ready to come out. <sighs> yes. Here we go. So this is it. Look, high density XPS foam, 50 millimeter thick. Although I kind of suspected it looks like. Well, it's not, it's 100 millimeter thick even, which is even better. But it rather looks to me like it's two layers of 50 mil stuck together, which is fine and cool with that, nice and square. Um, but this is gonna make the basis, part of the basis of my uh, rocky outcrop come dune that me, me figures crashed into. And to answer that question that people ask, where do I get stuff like that from myself? Uh, I tend to use, you can just go on Amazon for God's sake, go there's all sorts of things that you can find, but I tend to use um, 4D Model Shop, uh, which is modelshop.co.uk. Um, if you're in the UK, they're a London based company and they sell loads, I mean, absolutely tons of modelling components. It is kind of like a model maker's wet dream in many ways, getting on their website, so do check it out. Components for absolutely everything, and you can buy uh, different. Thicknesses uh, and different dimensions, high density foam, and like I said, so this is, yeah, 10 centimetres thick. Um, I've got to work out what the hell I'm going to do with it, but that's that's what we're going to be using to make this model. Oh, and I'm going to need, of course, hardboard. As we call it in the UK, we've had this conversation before, haven't we, what it's called across the pond. Hardboard um, to make the base. So, first of all, I've got to work out how big it is. I've got to cut out a base. I've got to cut some of this. It's going to be an interesting model this one. Uh, hang on to your seats kids. God, it's a bit dusty in here. Right, anyway, yes, make models. So I need to put the helamites away, I need to clear away the raw books. I've got a good idea what this picture looks like and it's just kind of piled up there, stacked up there and fallen off the edge. Yeah, with a camp. It's going to ins be inspired by this picture. Not necessarily an entire copy of it, all right? Good, right. Um, if you like what I do while it's going on, then make sure you give the video a like and leave comments down below. Always appreciated. Um, and hopefully you'll get to see all the, the stages of this model getting made. My first a piece of Necromunda Ash Waste terrain for me. Right, go go put rule books away. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, well this seemed like quite a cool idea, right? Uh, now I'm just having difficulty, <laughs> kind of like working out how the hell I'm going to pull it off. Um, obviously there's the cargo ridge hauler. Uh, actually I think having, I'm making two videos at the same time. Uh, I'm making this uh, Barracks and Badger scenery at the same time. I might have to do it in a similar way, because look, here I've got uh, filler. Well, I split away from that. Um, I might have to use filler some of this, so I've got to cut a rough shape. What I don't really want to do is assemble the whole ridge hauler 
all of this left side is just going to be like kind of sunk or piled into sand or certainly all these wheels I could use all of those um, for another model and junk and they could be spread around so I think I need what I need to do first of all is build this kind of mound that it gets, got stuck on um, obviously I'm not going to be making this big bit of rock here uh, although I quite like the idea of yeah hmm Hoping I'm bitten off more like a Jew. I should don't think I have yet. We'll see how we go. Alright, so that's where we're at. And um, this is my jolly big bit of XPS fun. <laughs> okay, so and this is the bit of board I cut out. I think of doing it on. Tipping it over like that. Uh, I mean it could have a pile of rock here once again Tim comes up with a great idea and then thinks he might have bitten off more than he could chew um, <laughs> oh, fucking. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this this is getting more complicated I thought this was going to be a pretty straightforward little model but I think um, what I'm going to have to do is build several elements I'm going to have to build a knobbly rocky outcrop bit hey that'd be cool be modelling with XPS foam and, and thick stuff so that's cool um, that will pile up and then mound up and then tip the th then tip the thing into it I think I don't want to waste all of this plastic all of this great model stuff and then sink it into a model I want to come up and not bother making that side of it so just yeah right okay right so I think the first thing I need to do is cut out my rough I've, I've got this Hardboard. I need to cut it into a kind of like a kind of like roundy kind of like things can go on the table, um, and then I need to build some piles of rock. I think so. This is about to become out how Magathea Builder Worlds builds piles of rock out of XPS foam. Let's give it a go. Whoa, hey! Okay, so usual safety brief here, guys. Make sure you've got a nice new sharp blade. Change it regularly. He said, not now. Where his nice new sharp blades were. Um, but however, this was pretty new. Just flick it around, turn it over. That way, if you're using a nice sharp blade, you are less likely to slip and stab yourself. Well, we all know, if you've watched a number of my videos, that doesn't always work. And uh, blood is spilt in the making of these models. <laughs> blood for the blood god, skulls for the throne of corn. That's better. Okay, so here now, is my cut out base. Next job is to make a bunch of rocks. I think I'm going to put on this side here. Um, uh, uh, this XPS. Because it's just going to be really easier to work with. God fuck knows I'm going to cut it. Right, let's go find out if a heat one cuts it first of all. Turning on. I really could do with uh, one of those Proxon cutters actually before I start using foam this thick. That's something I'll to investigate. Uh, use some of my Patreon funds to uh, fund a Proxon, maybe. Not that I've got anywhere to put one in here, but it would be quite cool. Oh, you don't need to see me cut the goat big lump of polystyrene, that would be fucking dull, wouldn't it? Come back and see me when it's done. Right, so I cut my block 10 centimetres thick. Kind of cool, it's bigger than that. I reckon I could, if I, I'm going to end up cutting out another bit, I think, stick on top of it, so it'll be like 20 centimetres tall. It'll be a, like a rocky outcrop with a kind of like a crash thing uh, in there, maybe. Might have to make this a bit thinner. Um, so now I've drawn on it, although. Going to reduce it a little more. Uh, I think that's how my rock's going to be. And if I'm coming, I'm going to obviously XPS foam is expensive, so I want to save this bit, put it on the top, make a pinnacle out of that. I think. Um, so again, I'm going to take my uh, wand. And this is where I've got to investigate and invest in some of our proxon cutter. Proxon cutters, for those of you who don't know, are kind of like. Uh, uh, a machine mounted wire cutter we cut straight in bits and pieces 
hardly any mess cutting that bit of post iron compared to cutting with a blade, which is brilliant. Um, now the Proxon, you can set it up with a jig and bits and pieces. They're, they're the, the things that the guys who, who cut individual bricks with, out of XPS foam always make your stuff out of. Um, they're kind of awesome. Although, I think you're mental if you do that, because, yeah, well, uh, yeah, certainly dedication. I don't, there's not enough time in my life. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of cut out, I'm use my wire, my heat rod, and I'm going to cut a rough shape now out of this foam, and I'm going to try and make sure I save the bottom corner of it, uh, so it can make the pinnacle and that way they are not wasted an enormous amount of XPS because it's kind of expensive stuff it's getting there but yep well, I think I'm going to be going out tomorrow and I buy a load more polyfiller. It's going to be the way forward for this. Certainly for filling gaps, which is what polyfiller does. Um, binding the various bits of the model together. Yeah, you get the idea. Catch you in a bit. Alright, so I'm totally making this up as I go along. Um, but, you know, we're... I've got to do some more angly stuff and some... I think I'm kind of using the heat tool to start off with and then I'm going to cut more with sharp knives. The XPS is great for cutting, so from that point of view... Don't, you don't have the same issues cutting this as you do low res polystyrene. I like density polystyrene, but what I'm doing here is I've um, decided that I'd have a separate bit on my pinnacles, my rock pinnacles. Um, so I'm going to have one kind of like tower here and a bit here, which means that I can actually cut. I'll have bits where characters can stand in between the two gonna make it big enough where I can get certainly a 25 30 millimeter necro base might not be able to get Ogrins through the gaps but and then we're gonna see what we get out of that kind of thing. It is a bit messy, this stringy stuff, it's a bit cack, but cleans off alright. I could pull it off. <laughs> I've filled up with bin and stuff now, I've got movie bins. Okay, so, cut out my first bit. Woohoohoo! And uh, now I'm working out the rest. That bit's going to go on here, with more levels, and um, rough bits here that are going to slope down the other side that are going to allow me to Tip for my vehicle in, I think. Um, let's see how that works out. Yeah, good luck. Tally ho. Still going with the rocks. To pause. Then. <coughs> this is where I'm up to then. I have made a rock stack, yeah, yeah, of the 10 centimeter thick, 100 millimeter uh, XPS foam. Still a bit hairy in places. I've carved it. I've cut out bits. I've cut in a little kind of cavey bit and overhangs. What I've tried to do is make it flat in places that I could place figures. I might even cut out a little bit more of this so I can get more of a figure in there. Um, there are bits around the back figures can go on as well. And then what I've done is I've cut a collection of taken the offcuts basically from that rectangle that I started with because I don't want to chuck them away they're still worth a lot and I've basically cut out a number of 
pieces of foam we are going to build up to make that sand dune that appears in the picture like this roughly because um, and I'm going to fill, stick all this on, I think, and fill it then around it with, with polyfiller. Um, now, what I've been doing is I've been trying this out with this version of the Ridge Hauler 8, which sits kind of in there now, which isn't great because but there's a bit of an angle on there, which is like the model. And I'm thinking if I don't put this set of wheels on, <coughs> it will tip further in there. And I'll begin, I'll be able to sink it into a load of polyfiller. The whole thing will get covered in sand, which will then like hide a multitude of sins. That's the word. Um, and then we're going to have a ridge hauler 8 in there like that. Probably with a container on the end. I might try and move it up. So the front of it hangs over, I think, the front of this dune. Container there. Sand in there. I think it's going to look alright, actually. Um... Yeah, I'm basically, I'm, I'm not going to put all the wheels on because I don't think I need to. It's just going to lean up against that. Might tip it in a bit further. Um, and that way there, I can use the wheels and all the those bits of spares. So, what I need to do now is kind of like where I've got all of this bit. So I'm going to draw around the outside of that very briefly. The... Um, main rocky outcrop of course is stuck already on here so I'm just drawing around this lot now so I can take off the individual pieces glue them roughly back in the position and then I'll put that to one side obviously so I can then uh, let it dry I'll get on with another project in the meantime Uh, the other thing I've got to do is start making the other ritual, uh, which, yeah, I'll only make one side of. It won't get the flat bed in here because it's going to take a container because the, there's definitely a container on the one in the model and that will fill up with sand um, and level it out, which will be quite cool. So there's sand in there, which makes a floor because the whole thing's going to be on the wonk. So I'm going to stick that out of the way. I'm going to get my PVA glue out. And I think it's going to be easier if I glue, put all the glue, just glue down to the base and then place the bits on rather than glue the individual, individual pieces. Things are glue drying. Um, I don't know which video this is going to be in, but look, look here's the uh, the glue drying on the rocky outcrop on the, the shipwreck in case it goes in that video. And then uh, here is also the glue drying on the ash waste bit of terrain. Uh, Doing them on the same night, funnily enough. Um, well, while well, that's going on, a quick pause. Uh, the pause is this. Uh, I've got to uh, give a big shout out to my mate Ant. Ant, I know you're watching this. Um, and uh, um, either one of these, in fact, I might bung it in both. Hey, that'll make you smile, wouldn't it? Um, it's uh, uh, nice to know you're watching, buddy. Um, I hope that you are coping this time with the fact that well, the whole workshop is round the wrong way. Uh, and that's the same for anybody else who's been used to watching my videos for best part of two years with uh, most of the uh, work camera be work being over there filming this way. But of course, I have recently changed workshops and offices around and now I'm back to front. Uh, for some people who get a little bit kind of like, you know, happy with how the world works, I know it's messed with your mind, so. And, and to anybody else who can't cope with the fact that now the camera's on my left shoulder, not my right. Um, hi guys, nice to see you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the vids. Uh, catch up with you soon, buddy. Uh, um, if it's not, if it's faced you at all, but doing this kind of thing, and me messing around with workshops, drop a comment down below. Um, if you're not bothered at all, you just don't care as long as you're happy watching, then also drop a comment down below. Uh, and uh, I can continue to be your kind of like buddy in the corner where most of you are doing your hobby. Um, actually, it'll be quite an interesting thing for me to find out right now as it goes. If you're watching this and you got this far into the video, um, then can you comment down below what you do when you're watching my videos? I mean, yeah, keep it clean. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure there's some specific video channels for that kind of thing, but not here. Um, but are you doing hobby yourself? Um, or are you the kind of, you know, are you painting models, making models? Um, or, uh, I don't know, doing a washing up? Do you, you kind of put me this, my kind of videos on when you're doing other stuff? Or is this something that's very much related to your hobbies as well? Um, I'd be really fascinated to know. It always kind of—it's just interesting. I'd like to know they're the kind of people who are watching. Anyway, um, back on with the builds. Right, what the bloody hell am I going to do now? Everything's dry. And I don't know what to do. No, no, I could paint some B and B figures. I could stick some Necromunda figures together. I could make a rich hall of eight. Oh, I want to freaking know. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, catch you in a bit. Okay, so while everything glues, uh, glues dry, I'm going to make the uh, sub-assembly, the wheel structure, the chassis for this Ridge Hall of 8, although I'm only going to make half of it. Um, I'm only going to go down half of one side. I'm not going to waste the wheels and other bits if I don't have to, so I need four wheels. And some sticky up in the air bits and, and stuff and, and suspension and things. And then the rest of it. I might scatter some of it around the model, but the rest of it could be used with other things, can't it? It's cool. Right, okay, so got me clippers. Clip clip clip. Got me wheels, got me polystyrene cement. I found several bottles. Um it's quite exciting. So uh, let's get on with this and uh, see what we can get done.
So, I don't actually think you need a kind of like an instructional video as to how to put this thing together. Especially since I'm not putting it together as entirely per the instructions, instructions whatever they're called. Because I'm not uh, bothering to assemble at the moment this left hand side at all. In fact, I might end up taking off this assembly here. Because obviously I want it to all kind of like lie, lie and be buried in the sand dune or up on the rocks or whatever so uh, I'm trying to save as much as I can so I'm putting this together I've got uh, different parts in assembly at the moment which I'm going to leave to go off there's the container that's going to go on the back and this side here and now I'm just making the kind of like the front part of the cockpit um, and now I'm going to see how we'll do rough assemblies with the, the model when it's all dry tomorrow nearly there for tonight oh, late right. oh, we're going to go to bed Happy days. Right, so this is now stuck down, but I've got loads of other bits that I haven't stuck down because I'm constantly adding small bits of styrene. I want to cover this all with filler, but I'm making up as much of the hill as I can possible with the XPS foam because um, we waste full of filler. I had no idea what shape it was going to be. I've now made the ridge hauler. The ridge hauler is going to sit here, kind of thing, which means I'll be able to bury wheels and sand and, and I've filled in the gap over here and I'm going to have filler go across there, sand getting up inside there. So it's kind of coming on. It's going to be my little homage. It's working quite well. So I'm going to stick these loose bits now. That's the next thing. Um, and then think about deciding whether well, I have to stick the ridge holder on as I do all the putting all the filler on. I think I haven't got any other choice. So that's the way we've got to go. So stick down small bits of styrene, then stick on the ridge hauler and start to. Right then, um, apart from a bit of PVA that's still going off because I just saturated the whole thing with PVA. My. Rockage and dune and whatever else, mostly there. The ridge hauler is going to be crashed in there. It's going to get buried um, sand and dust and all the rest of it. So, what I need to do now is start to cover this thing in polyfiller and filler to fill up all the gaps, all of these gaps, and fill in. I want his front wheel's partly buried in ash and sand around the front of the vehicle here, down the back here um, all around it really so we're going to do start filling in covering up so that's what we're going to do, I'm going to use a uh, quick dry and polyfiller I think it's probably going to take several several um, layers so this is not going to get all done in one go. I'm hazarding a guess. Okay, no so idea. so far I've got I've used an entire tube of uh, filler, and I'm putting on big kind of like worms of it and, and brushing it on, wetting down the brush, smoothing it. Always pretty cool. Um, I don't know whether I'm ready. I haven't got the bottle to stick this in properly yet. But it is going to have to go in. Uh, it's going to go in there like that. 
and means all the wheels are up. But then there's still quite a lot of filler to go around it because I want to fill in in here and across here and up over the wheels. So these wheels here are kind of going to be stuck in and then maybe hang it back just a little like this. Cover up some more of the And then that way there, it's on quite an angle. I want to put loads down this side here, so all those wheels are sunk in the in the ash in the sand. So I think, to be honest, well, what I'm going to do first of all, before I start going there, I've got an idea of where it's going to sit, which is fine. I'm going to go up these sides first of all, so they've got some cover on them. And then I'm going to stick that bad boy on. I'm going to see where we are. Where to put my brush? Um, so, first coat, first cover of filler. I'll put the ridge hauler eight on, um, and then I'll leave it overnight. Give it 18 hours or so to go off as best I can, and then I'll come back to it with another tube of filler and fill in all around the ridge hauler, um, and then that way there uh, we'll get. I'll be able to see what's what, but I will stick that model on tonight. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna worry too much about the other side. But I'm gonna fill up all all up in here, everywhere that would be awkward to get to after the ridge holders on. And then this isn't gonna be doesn't matter of all the swirls and the gunky bits for the minute, because um, it's all gonna get covered in sand in in uh, um, coral sand. Have a much rougher ash like texture, well it's the ash waste so let's get a bit more filler there I'm literally just screwing it out over the model and then I'm going to fit it in as best I can so it's quite expensive, well it's not expensive 5 quid a tube and stuff but uh, I am going to use a lot of it on this model but look here we go just literally sticking that working it into the rock face hopefully that will also help get rid of some of the stereotypical rather obvious um, angled kind of look of cut polystyrene which rock faces made out of this stuff often does have uh, It's good stuff, but yeah, sometimes it looks very obvious that it's been cut and with straight blades or heat ones or whatever. So this is going to help get rid of that. Blend in these two bits together. I mean, in some ways, this model might benefit from plaster-made rocks as well, but I don't think it's going to be necessary really. Anyway, come back to me when it's done. And we'll stick the model on. Right, so I've now got a first coat of filler on pretty much the whole of the rock face. And I've stuck the ridge holder on where I want it. So what I'm doing now is I've put one squirt of filler here around the back of the ridge holder. And I'm going to pull that up and over the wheels out the back of the model because that's where I'm gonna oh, it's gonna help to hold it in place and now we're gonna pile up sand and grit into the back of it I think what I'm probably gonna end up doing actually is um, tomorrow when this is all dry get another piece of uh, XPS foam, polyfiller, uh, of polystyrene, stick it in here because I don't want to build all that out of filler, it'll be really wasteful. Um, it'll take forever and a day to dry, so I'm gonna, yeah, fill that there. But I'm probably gonna fill, I mean, it's got a good space at the back here in some ways, it'd be 
great for putting figures on, but I like the idea of there being a whole load of ash and sand right across the back of this. Completely kind of obliterating the back of the vehicle. It certainly does that in the picture that we were looking at. So it's going to build in there. Right up into the ridge all. I mean I want it to be sitting on the side here and there I've got to fill that. But yeah, I think that's gonna be much better if I have a sloping bit of styrene there. That'll save on the amount of filler but it's gonna need filler down behind it fill all that in there. I want this whole thing to be kind of like wedged in against this great big pile of rock. Hundreds of years or decades of wind has blown all this into place. And the ridge hauler has become very much part of this kind of like camp for these uh, nomads. Notice that on this piece of terrain there's been no room for these tents, so I'm going to have to save them and make another bit. Oh no! More ash waste nomads terrain. Bummer. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're going. I'm going to stick, I'm going to squirt some. Just going to squirt, squirt some filler in amongst these tyres and wheels again to help hold the whole model in place. Tomorrow I want it. Dry and solid, not going anywhere. So, up underneath that wheel there. get inside that but smaller brush Tim is the answer right all of this again is going to be covered with coral sand so doesn't matter too much about the texture of the filler here I just want all the wheels filled up and see if we can find a thinner brush to poke some of this Filler inside. There we go. I think it's going to be a bit of a gradual process. Is. However, this first fix of filler should help hold the model in place, which is part of the point. I'm doing it. Right, so the first, after the end of the first day, night of filler, this is going to be a heavy model. Uh, this is where we're at. So now the ridge hauler is in place. Um, I've put it into the wet plaster, the wet filler, and then sunk it as best I can into the wet filler, and now I've added more filler to the wheels. The wheels in the picture are very clearly half sunk into ash and sand. They've got it all blown up there. I've put a load more inside because I want all that filled up as well really. Um, and uh, I'm now going to leave it to dry. Um, probably for about 24 hours I think. It's got to go off solid, there's a lot of filler there. Um, that then will hold the whole ridge hauler in place. And uh, it's kind of cool, I haven't got any Necromunda figures on my board. Uh, to show somebody standing on it. It's going to be awkward putting figures on there, but you know, 
Uh, what have we got? Oh, look, there's a, a Mordheim witch hunter. Actually, have a square base like that. Stands in there, alright, don't um, He's a bit ash waste nomad. Look at that burning bright brand. Yes, that's all we're going to do. We're going to leave it there uh, and going to dry it off. Let's see how we go. Okay, so there is still quite a lot to do to this model. I've got it to a, a stage where I'm happy to call it quits to the end of this first video. Um, the Ridge Hauler 8 is stuck on. It's kind of like in its suitable tipped up position. I've got a rocky outcrop. I've got kind of like terrain. Still quite a lot to do. Um, I want to add some more styrene here and build up the, the sand up the back here so there's more going in here. Um, I want to add some sand so it's more of a level layer in there. I want to add more to this model, more details wise to make it look like the nomads have been living in it um, one way or another. It needs shelters and, and, and junk around about the place. It's, uh, of course it needs a, a rough ash waste sand kind of like texture to it and I've still got to paint the whole thing. So there's still quite a lot of work to do but I really am quite pleased with the uh, uh, progress that I've made in this video. I really wasn't sure how again this was going to work out and how I was going to achieve this but it looks to me like we're kind of doing all right. Um, there are lots of things that are going to make it much much better next time around. Um, coating the whole thing in Mod Podge first of all, all the plaster to seal it and then sealing all of that with the rock coating will be a really really good start but before I do that I've got to add more I want to definitely lose more of these wheels and various other bits and pieces so there's a lot to go um, if you think there are other bits that I need to include on this model please make sure you leave a comment down below of course give us a like you know do the thumbs up thing give us a comment down below I'd love to know what you think of these models do you think it's going to look like enough like the thing out of the book for me to kind of like um, achieve what I was setting out to do in the first place? I'm kind of hoping it is, fingers crossed. Um, if you uh, think that this isn't kind of like I could have done it differently, please leave comments down below. If you'd like to see... If you'd like to see some uh, other Ashway stuff, if you've got some ideas for other Ashway scenery that I could make to uh, that would complement this, um, or if you think there are basic stuff you'd like to see me have a go at making to help people out, give them a bit of a tutorial, then please again leave comments down below. You get the idea, you know, it's a kind of like a two way street, it's um, very much a community thing. Uh, I make stuff that people talk about and are interested in, and you know, um, that kind of thing. So help me out, guys, give me some ideas, it'll be really, really cool. Um, if you have enjoyed watching this and this is the first time that you've found a Magra 3 Builder Worlds video, check out the back catalogue there. It's kind of like 80 plus videos for you to watch. Um, and make sure you hit that subscribe and notification buttons and then you'll see more stuff uh, from me very soon. Especially, preferably, <laughs> the next bit of this. Thanks for watching Magra 3 Builder Worlds. I really appreciate you uh, uh, tuning in and watching my stuff make doing your own hobby alongside me i should think um i am going to be at the southeast london war game show on the 16th of october i'm just going as a punter um if you're at selwig in lee valley um then uh, and you bump into a hairy big guy kind of like wandering around looking a bit kind of like dazed and confused looking at all these different war games <clears throat> make sure it's me first because I mean, in fairness no i'm a bit of a type on already for war games but you know do make sure you say hello it's great to meet people who watch this channel. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, like I said, thank you very much for watching. Tune in for part two. And uh, keep watching everything else that is produced here on Magathea Builder World. I'll see you next time. Now, time to apply more polyfiller. <laughs>